the gentle light that falls around me you're the first thought on my mind let our voices rise all creation cries singing out an endless alleluia from this moment on join with heaven's song Welcome back to worship with us today. We're so grateful to have you, whether you're watching from your living room, your kitchen, or if you're listening to us while you're driving in the car. Thank you for gathering with us today to worship and to praise our God. Please join me in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you so much for, for gathering us from all of our separate spaces together as one body in you. We ask that you open our hearts and open our minds to all that you have to share with us today. And God, for those among us who are sick, who are hurting, who are grieving, who are lonely or lost, we ask that you lift them up today and that you show them your, your peace, your love, your comfort, that you help to, to heal those who are sick or hurting and just provide for them that, that healing hand. We thank you and we praise you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our scripture lesson today is Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all, all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift that my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you, go are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid them from their sight or hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. So thank you again for being with me this week, Miranda and Andy. It was great having you last week, so I thought we'd just bring you back. I hope that's okay. Are we supposed to... Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, of course it's okay. It's always okay. Didn't, didn't sound that okay, but we're just well, gonna... I didn't, we're just gonna truck on. I wasn't on. prepared to jump in on that. No. <laughs> it's all right. We're just, gonna, we're just gonna pretend that didn't happen and keep going. Okay. So, how does the Holy Spirit empower us as the church to carry on the work of Christ? Yeah. It's a big question. Yeah. It's a big question. So I'll start us off. I think that the Holy Spirit, who's kind of often not forgotten about, but just sort of like set to the side neatly because we can't quite define the Spirit. It's harder to, to really describe what the Spirit does. Uh, but the Holy Spirit's the one acting and moving and breathing in the church today. Like that's the continuation of the story. And Christ, you know, when he talks about sending his spirit to these people, he talks about having this, this spirit that is like tenfold his power is coming to them and how, how lucky they are to have the spirit guiding them, that, that while he is in heaven, his spirit is still 
with us and that we have that guide. You know, we, we talk often about um, that kind of that voice that you hear in the back of your head <laughs> where it's like you hear God whispering to you like, hey, maybe you shouldn't be doing this or, or God speaking. And I like to think of that as, as the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit empowering the church to move forward. What do you guys think? I do think the, the Spirit is the, the breath of life of God in us on earth. Because, like the passage was saying, Jesus is now in heaven, but the Holy Spirit, He left as a gift for us. And I feel like that presence, uh, we would talk about in church, like when the presence of God is with you. And there is a difference. You can feel it. You can be assured by it's a comforting presence, it's a reassuring presence. It's something that I feel when I sing most mm -hmm. of the time and also I if I don't feel it I am also know that it's there mm -hmm. there's a part of me that when I there's times in my life where I've struggled through my relationship with God but I've never felt that he's not there mm -hmm. I've always felt that he said like there's just this always like he's saying I'm here when you're ready Mm -hmm. And I feel like that is an example of the Holy Spirit for my life, mm -hmm. that um, collectively he, he connects us all together in the Spirit. But yet for me, he's always saying, I'm right here when you need me. Mm -hmm. And I think, Ruth, I'm going to fight your second part there, the voice inside the back of your head. Oh, that's always fun. <laughs> well, I, I, when, whenever I look at that, I, I, was... always, I always go to Jiminy Cricket which is, I think, the perfect example. He may be that the voice of, like, reason inside of your life, but Jiminy isn't always, like, fully looking out for everything in the, the whole world at the same time. He's looking out for Pinocchio. And so it's a, kind of this voice that, like, it looks out for yourself, but it doesn't look out for, the, like, not your fellow Christians or, like, the, that other thing. And for me, the Holy Spirit is this communal embodiment and power it's not the the individual and so i think there's a distinction that needs that is made between like the personal connection that you have with the holy spirit and like the holy spirit in in all mm -hmm. because i feel like the holy spirit is more of that where two or more are gathered there so i am as well that that power that comes with community and th the building of Christianity, but that, uh, or, or yeah, he, I don't feel like it's a Jiminy Cricket. That's that's my. Well, well and you could a, get that confused a... with just like intuition or coincidence mm -hmm. or whatever. But the Holy Spirit is more. Yes, it's a both and. It's not a mm -hmm. one or. I, I think that that's fair. Mm -hmm. it, it's not necessarily just, you know, but but we cannot get rid of the, the personal aspect either. Mm -hmm. You know, there's that personal aspect and there is the communal aspect. And you can't, it, it's easy to get those confused with your own intuition. or with. And I think that's why a lot of people struggle with how do you hear God's voice? How do you hear God's voice when there's so many voices? You know, am I, am I really hearing my voice and just trying to make it what the spirit wants. And I think that's why we're given things like scripture, things like a community of believers to, to really check that against, because sometimes you're right. I, sometimes we will conflate the two and just be like, yeah, this is totally the Holy spirit. And it's not, I know in my own life, I've, I've had struggles with hearing the Holy spirit, but I do think the Holy spirit does talk to us on, on personal levels mm. as well. Um, but thank you for, for bringing that up. You're right. Communal, it, it's about more than just us. And mm -hmm. we spend a lot of time, especially in, in evangelical churches, talking about that personal relationship and making it all about me and God instead of us and God. Mm -hmm. So thank you. I, I appreciate that. That wasn't really a fight. I was expecting you to like... Well, I, I was more fighting you on the fact that like, you know, Jiminy <laughs> Cricket. But that's... <laughs> I believe we all have our own Jiminy Cricket. That's that's my. <laughs> <laughs> so, one of the things that we we hold very dear in in the church and is one of our our sacraments um, is baptism, and 
at the time that, that Jesus is talking here, they mostly, they, they were baptizing, you know, we have John the Baptist with water. And so he talks about this difference between baptism of the water and baptism of the spirit. So what does it actually mean to be baptized with the Holy Spirit versus just baptized with water? It's a little rough. I feel like baptized with water, was that happening before Jesus came? Like, obviously, John was John the that. Baptist, yep. Was that, did he, like, start baptism? Man, Do we know? going to test my knowledge know. here. But I feel like baptized in water is more like a symbolic... You're being washed and coming back up. But like that, I think that was all they could do without the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. With the Holy Spirit, it's actually a, you have entered into a kingdom, a presence, a community of believers, of Christ's love, of, I'm not sure if that's the difference. Mm -hmm. That's an... Well, and I think just off the top of my head, which, you know, maybe... Google, your friend will help. Yeah, I'm it, it was based. Yeah. It was based in some form of tradition. It wasn't just oh, we're just randomly starting to do this now. I'm, I'm fairly certain it was steeped in in some sort of tradition in that idea of cleansing, um, cleansing yourself or preparing yourself for, to receive God. And yeah, I, I think it's hard to. It's it, again, and these are kind of weighty questions this week because I'm like, yeah. let's test all of our doctrines today, but. <laughs> Being baptized with the Holy Spirit is God is acting. Yeah. Right? In in It's not just water anymore. It's exactly. or a symbol anymore. It's an actual There there's there is God meeting humanity where we are. And we even have the example of Jesus' baptism. When Jesus ba is baptized, the I mean, dove the descends, dove. which yes. you know, the Holy Spirit. Yes. <laughs> and his divinity is is affirmed. Like this is my son for whom I am well pleased and so i think that the fact that that baptism is offered to us is really that that empowering that we were talking about before that the holy spirit now resides in you and you are a temple of god and therefore god is everywhere <laughs> and that's one of the big differences is that it's not just again human hands but it's that divine essence as well finding anything Kind of. Okay. Um, really, it is it is based in tradition, but John the Baptist is the one who is sent first to mm -hmm. do the baptisms of God. I'm actually looking at um, John uh, verse 1, uh, 33 right now, uh, because Google gave me this definition when it's talking about where to draw and get the idea of baptism from, and it mentions the Holy Spirit, and that's the, that's the part that I'm looking at. Um, uh, and I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with the water, and the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptize, baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. You're in the King James. I know, that's why I was trying to find it in the ERV <laughs> okay. version, so that I'd have a better understanding of it before I said anything, but I couldn't find it that quickly. <laughs> yes, so it was a symbol of... of the one who was to come, a symbol of the Messiah that, mm -hmm. the, that the dove would descend. Because John the Baptist, his role was to prepare the way for, to, to prepare announce. Prepare ye exactly. the way of the Lord. So there was, there was always supposed to be this distinction between who John, and John the Baptist himself got lots of questions. Mm -hmm. Are you the Messiah? Are you the one who is promised? And he would regularly say, no, I am not. And the whole point was to point to who really was, which was Christ. Mm -hmm. So what do you think is the significance then of Christ ascending into heaven? You know, he sent us a, his spirit because he also ascended into heaven. Why is that important? I feel like it is a little sad because he's like leaving. Mm -hmm. But also, it's divinity. Like, he can't just die like a normal human being, because mm -hmm. he's not. So I think it was unnecessary. He has to leave because he's God, but he has to send us that he is still with us. I'm not sure. But I think it's significant because he's God. He couldn't stay. See, I, I like to think um, that that ascension is really... Christ 
allowing us again to join in the ministry of building the kingdom on earth. When God created us, we were given freedom, right? Free will, this empowerment to, to walk with God, but also be a part of creation. It's one of the reasons I think that, that arts are so important because our, our creation is a part of fundamentally who we are. Even someone like me who's terrible at art, it's, it's still a part of us. And so I think in that way, allowing us to be a part of this creation of this new kingdom was a blessing and a mercy in and of itself. You know, one person can only go to so many places, but when you empower all of these other people to keep going and moving in the world, look what happened. We still have Christianity 2000 years later. That's a big thing. And I'm not saying God couldn't have done that or Christ couldn't have done that. But the fact that we were allowed to be a part of that is so cool in my head. So we're, we're running a little short on time. So I guess I just want to want to ask this one final question before I give the challenge question, which is how does this passage still impact us today? And I think we've really touched on that in a lot of ways. It's that empowering us to be the church. You know, this is important because Christ gave us the opportunity to join in and not only gave us the opportunity, but then gave the tools, gave us the spirit to, to be able to go and move and, and be the church. I think it's also a calling to remember your baptism almost. Mm -hmm. It's that um, choice that we made to be a part of this community, mm -hmm. to be a part of Christ to grow in our faith it's like it's just a reminder that we have made that decision and that we live into that every that we are called to live into that every single day and I think it's just it's good to have a reminder mm -hmm. and I think this serves as one of those for sure any final thoughts all right so our challenge question today last last week we invited you to show love or share love with somebody intentionally and this week we're inviting you or asking you how can we share christ to the world as we were called to do so what does that look like not just going and necessarily doing good things but also sharing christ intentionally so any thoughts or ideas on our challenge question i think um daily living as the best you that you can be or just mm -hmm. the the answering to yourself and making sure that you are allowing this spirit to work in you personally before you think oh i need to do such and such but letting it happen and then letting god use you when it's time and being a open to that voice Absolutely. I completely agree with Miranda. Yeah, and always pointing it back to Christ. You know, I think I think there are opportunities where things come up, and it's like, hey, why did you why did you love your neighbor when maybe they were kind of mean to you? It's like because Christ first loved us. You know, it sounds simple, but that makes a big impact. I think. So, please join me in prayer as we prepare to enter into the praise portion of this service. Dear God. We thank you for the gift of your spirit and that we're baptized not just with water and with human hands, but with, with the Holy Spirit, God. We know that this is a, tr a treasured gift from you. Help us to remember that and help us to feel your spirit's presence with us today as we praise you, as we worship you in wonder, in awe and reverence. Be with us today. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're done. Sorry, those were a lot of like theological questions, and I'm like, oh man, I got them all the theological ones, so they're probably not easy.
King of 